I'm a little tired of that. If somebody steps forward and says, we'll give you the money, then I would make a film. But I don't want to have to go out and try and raise it. Mr. Ali, it's a great pleasure to have you here with, with El Tiempo. And uh, first of all, I would like to talk about uh, your uh, new movie, Coup de Chance. Uh, this is your most recent movie. I refuse to call it the last one, and I hope it won't be the last one. Uh, but anyway, uh, was it different to film in it, uh, knowing it could be uh, one of the last movies you made? Was it different? No, it was, it was the same. It was yeah, a movie is a movie, whether you make it first, last, if you make it in Paris or Colombia or New York, it's the same thing. You show up early in the morning, you get out there and you make a lot of bad decisions that you regret later. And, uh, and then you have to put it together and do the best you can in the editing room to try and save it from being a catastrophe and sometimes <laughs> you do and sometimes you don't but it's the process is always the same no matter where you are or when absolutely um i'm a big fan of your work i've been watching your movies for about 40 years may i have the hope of watching a new woody allen movie in the coming future that i don't know because um <clears throat> i'm always the People always ask me, what is the biggest problem in making movies? And I always tell them the biggest problem is raising the money. It's very difficult to raise money for movies because they're expensive. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm very a very low-end movie maker. I make them very inexpensively. They're still expensive. And, so it's, and you have to go through a lot of rigmarole to raise the money. I'm a little tired of that. If somebody steps forward and says, we'll give you the money, then I would make a film. But I don't want to have to go out and try and raise it. I don't want to have to go to meetings and lunches and, and talk to people endlessly. You know, it would have to be some, some Medici, someone stepping out of the arts and saying, you know, we, we like your films and we'd like to see another one. But short of that, uh, I, I can't see it. Uh, regarding the title, the, the French expression, Coupe de Chance, uh, what has been the biggest uh, stroke of luck that you have had in, in your life? I've had so much luck in my life that I could never say it came in a stroke. It was almost like a blanket of luck that I've had. It's It's been continual from I was lucky as a small child I had good parents I have had good families my family's very good my wife my children I've had luck with my health thank goodness uh, I've had luck uh, when I got into the movie business there were people around me that uh, that chose only to write about what I could do well. They, they didn't say anything about all the bad things in my work. They, they only emphasized what I did well. I've had a, a charmed life in that respect. Uh, Mr. Allen, in, in some of your early movies, there were some references to Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, do you remember when did you discover uh, his words, the, 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 the novel from Garcia Marquez? <coughs> well, those of us in my my age and and my peer group uh, all were you know a, a cult of his we all we all loved him um, long before i met him uh, i i i loved his work as did everybody my age and my generation and you know we, the, his book uh, was such a, an iconic a piece of literature and um, then eventually I got to meet him and spend a little time with him and, and found him of course lovely and fascinating and and uh, truly great great artist. Do you do you remember what was the first movie you ever watched as a kid? I remember my parents taking me to see Snow White uh, the Disney film when I was very little 
and uh, and I watched uh, uh, the patriotic film that Irving Berlin was in, uh, but it was a film at, kind of at the beginning of World War II. And when did you fall in love with, with, with cinema? Yes, it was very easy, it was very seductive because the outside world was quite terrible. The outside world was, was uh, you know, loud and violent and uh, boring and I hated school. I, you know, it was not fun. And then you would go into this alternate reality. You'd walk into a, a beautiful place and it was dark and the other world was gone. The, the, the real world was gone. You were in a place where it was just, it was candy and popcorn and beautiful, beautiful women and very brave men, very honorable men and, and very amusing men and women. And you would see them in these stories and you get to know them and you come back a month later and they would be in a different story, the same people in a different story and and, uh, and this would happen over the years. You keep seeing the same people in different stories and it was like another reality existed in a dark room someplace and you always had the option for very little money of stepping out of the unpleasant reality into the beautiful reality and uh, and so it was very seductive so I was I left the real reality as often <laughs> as possible and stayed away from it as long as I could we are talking to you uh, thanks to some computers uh, but in your memories a proposal of nothing you wrote that you don't own a computer uh, do you still write in a typewriter or, or handwriting? Both, yes. I, when I write uh, a script, I, I always lay on my bed with a yellow pad and a pen, a ballpoint pen, and I write. Then when I've written some pages, I walk over to my typewriter, I, and I say I have the same typewriter that I bought when I was 16 years old. It cost me $40 uh, in the 1950s, and... Um, it's never. It's a German typewriter, an Olympia portable, and you could drop it off the Empire State Building, and it would still type. It's it's just <laughs> amazing. it's amazing, and uh, and I I and I type. Uh, I've never I've never owned a computer, and I don't have the need for one. And are you right now writing a new script or a new book or anything? Yes, yes, I'm writing. Uh, I'm working on a book. I'm working on a couple of plays. Yes, I'm always writing. I haven't finished the screenplay, and as I say, if someone comes out of the wall with the money, I, maybe I'll do it. But uh, I'm always writing. When 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 there's nothing happening immediately, I'll be working on a play or a book or a short story or something because I I enjoy it. I don't think of it. Uh, you know, I always think that I've never really worked a day in my life. Because uh, I like to write, so it's enjoyable for me. So that's what I do. Mr. Allen, are, are you afraid of death? Uh, no, no. I, 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 you know, when you get older, you get mixed feelings about it. You, you feel, you know, kind of a, sort of a longing for it when you reach a certain age. You know, you, you feel. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, it's just like, as I've said before, like when you go for your colonoscopy and they and they put you unconscious. You know, you just. But in addition to all the pleasant things, you lose all the unpleasant things. And there's so many more unpleasant things in the world that uh, that it's a, it's a good deal for the uh, victim. James Lipton used to ask in, in, in his show Inside the Actor Studio one last question, and that was, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive to the pearly gates? Uh, hear God say, I, you know, thank God you're back. I did the best I could. 
Cine, música, series, libros, teatro, artes plásticas, gastronomía, todo el mundo de la cultura y el entretenimiento aquí en El Tiempo. Suscríbase al canal de YouTube del Tiempo, que además es gratis, y le mandamos notificaciones de nuevos videos.